Oh. What is going on guys? Today we are back with another video. I actually just got back up north from my first open water trip of the year. And oh my gosh, let me explain to you guys. I wish I almost could explain to you guys how revitalizing it was for the soul, for the body, for the mind. I feel like a new person. Ice fishing, yes, as it is great. And I actually saw a YouTube comment the other day and um, on the last video we did on, on the Mississippi River. And um, it was something to the effect of ice fishermen are always super excited to get on the ice and they're always equally as excited to get off of the ice. And that is absolutely true for me. Love, I obviously love that first ice, ice bite. Love the excitement around ice fishing, but uh, I also love getting off the ice and getting back in the boat. Because ultimately, I always say, now I know some of you guys love your ice fishing, but I always say that um, if, you, if you love ice fishing more than you love open water fishing, you've never been in a boat on a beautiful May night catching walleye. So um, we're unbelievably excited to be back in a boat. Very happy day for us to kind of get that first video out. Fished for a couple of days down there. Um, we'll actually be back down in a similar area soon doing some more river fishing as it's kind of the only water available. And if you give me the option of drive several hours and fish in a boat when it's really cold out or go sit on the ice when it's really cold out, I will 100% pick in a boat every single time. But um, we can obviously officially welcome this ice fishing or this ice fishing season goodbye and the open water season is officially here for us and we're super excited about that. So um, I always kind of like to do some wrap ups on anytime I get you know, outside of kind of the area I'm super comfortable in and uh, go fish some of these bites at locations where I don't spend a lot of time. I always kind of like to do these kind of wrap up videos, answer a bunch of questions. Obviously there's not a whole lot of open water opportunity right now. Um, it's just, obviously it's cold. You know, sometimes March can be like January and sometimes March can be like May. You just never really know what it's gonna be like. And this year it seems like March is kind of a lot like February was. A lot of cold weather, um, snow, things like that. So. Um, want to answer some questions obviously kind of the star bait of the show and you guys can say you know i i'm not a big bait guy and i'm really not and the more i go fish other places the more i kind of realize we'll try to get a little focus going on here there it is there's the acme v-rod in that the, the color is actually maverick and that has been for a couple years now one of my absolute favorite early season anytime the water is cold kind of snap jigging baits in a river system and I like that bait. It comes in a quarter ounce or a three A ounce. I'll link them down below. Other colors do work, yes. Another color, you know, the video is always, I feel like a snapshot into my day. Whatever I kind of do on a, on a, anytime I kind of post a video, I feel like the video is often a snapshot of an amount of that day, not the full day, right? Because I always pull fish out of it that I don't put in there. You know, sometimes, you know, I generally like to film some of the better portions of the day. Gold was a good color straight up gold um, there's another color called big muddy which was very good and that color looks kind of like do we have one handy here just wait here for a second guys we'll grab one quick and that color is generally if you kind of want like an all-purpose color that just works absolutely everywhere this is absolutely one of my favorite colors to use just because it seems to be killer in clear water and honestly the the rivers that you're going to fish really early in the season before there's runoff they are really clear. We'll see if it focuses. Do you think it'll focus? Do you think it'll focus? There it is. There's, and that is called Big Muddy right there. And that is one of my favorite colors when I'm fishing clear water, whether that's Sturgeon Bay, um, you know, on Lake Michigan, or a lot of northern Wisconsin, northern Minnesota natural lakes. Blade bait's generally best when it's cold out. It seems to be fishing more than any other time when it is cold out. Um, but they're kind of a good bait that you can fish aggressive for a lot of the season. So definitely a bait to stock up on and uh, fish. Now, the key to fishing, and, you know, you go down here on a lot of these early season river walleye runs, and there's a ton of boats. And you can kind of see how most people generally fish. And a lot of time when that water's really cold, it's live bait. It's dragon jigs. It's dragon plastics. It's Dubuque rigs. Things of that nature. And a lot of times, one thing I find... That honestly, no matter how many walleyes I catch when the water is 32 to 36 degrees, which is super cold, obviously about as cold as the water temps are ever going to be when you're fishing in a boat, um, is how well fish will respond to a snappy presentation. And now there's a difference between like snap crack jigging and uh, what we were doing the other day. And always how I try to explain this kind of cold water period is when fish don't want to eat, when that water is really cold, you need something that just kind of like burst, but it bursts in such a short amount of length it can't come like this 
and then tail down and get bit. It can't be like a big crack of the rod and get bit. It's got to be something to the effect of like a boom, you know, just like that quick, like it can't come very far off bottom, but it has to move fast for just a second and then it has to have a pause. Kind of like a jerk bait. If you can imagine that, you know, like jerk bait, obviously two very different baits right here, you know, a blade bait versus a jerk bait. But a jerk bait does something that makes it really good in cold water. It goes boom, boom. It's this jerk and it's just walking the dog. It's going this way, then it's going that way, and then it's just hanging there. You know, a good jerk bait will obviously suspend perfectly in the water column. And that's kind of what a blade bait does. And then there's a long pause of the jerk bait too. And a blade bait, when worked effectively in cold water, it's going to go and then it's going to hit bottom. And it's just going to sit there for a second. And that's the same kind of pause that a jerkbait has in the middle of the water column. So it's that, you know, especially when fish don't want to eat. I can't stress that enough. How many times I've been out in the spring and especially in those midday hours when the water's really clear and cold, I've seen fish. What they want is something that cracks for a second, just goes and then hits the bottom and sits there. And most of those fish when the water's cold, that bait goes, sits there on the bottom and the fish will just kind of pin it to the bottom like that. So a lot of times you end up hooking them like a lot of the fish you guys see caught in really cold water where it's like, you know, if that's their mouth, they're hooked right here with this treble or something like that. So um, obviously blade baits are really good in cold water. There is definitely something to kind of this red, I always call it red craw color in really cold water um, that I've just seen or in river systems that I've just seen to be very effective kind of time and time again. And the same thing goes if you want to fish a different kind of basically right rattling vibrating bait and that's the rip and wrap and like a number six or a number five and um you know super killer baits this time of year too i like that same color when do you fish one versus the other generally if i feel like if fish are eating a little bit better i'll go to something noisier if i feel like fish are kind of lethargic um i'll go to something a little bit more you know less noisy which would be like a blade bait blade bait same hard rattling side to side or hard hitting side to side action but there's obviously no rattles in it and there's kind of one thing I noticed between, let's say the quarter ounce and the three eighths ounce in a blade bait. Some blade bait companies, guys who make blade baits, we're getting a phone call right now, we'll turn it off. Yo, I'm doing a video right now, let me call you back. All right. <clears throat> All right, we're back from the phone call. but. The quarter ounce V rod is actually a little bit smaller in dement, you know, it's smaller. It's just a smaller body bait. And what that gives you the ability to do, the bigger a blade bait is, the harder you have to hit it to make it go like, you know, like in a quarter ounce in this bait, you can just hardly lift the rod and the bait just goes real subtly. Where if you went up to like a three quarter or a one ounce or some really big bulky blade bait, you'd have to rip the bait farther to kind of get it to do that same if you know what I'm saying. So sometimes going down in size is an absolutely killer way to fish too, because you can work it less hard to get the same results. And especially in cold water, that's a big game changer. So I always want to kind of point that out and kind of give you guys a little bit of the, you know, inside look at kind of the stuff that goes through my mind or the stuff that makes me look at, you know, different baits a little bit differently. And another bait, which we actually caught fish on, which we didn't actually put in the video, because I, I, I kind of wanted to make it into a different video is kind of your glide bait style baits. And this is the Acme Hyper Hammer. And kind of my favorite size for fishing, this kind of body of water is generally the half ounce size. And it's kind of it's kind of the middle size. You guys obviously saw us use a bunch of the ice fishing ones. I don't have any here because I put them away and I'm really happy about that. But that half ounce size is pretty standard. Sometimes in really heavy current, like last year we had good luck on the biggest size, which is like almost an ounce I wanna say. Um, but, uh, yeah, obviously that same color I like a lot and you do a lot of the same thing, things with this, obviously you're not getting that, but basically what you can do with this kind of glide bait is pitch it out or fish vertically. And all you're doing is hitting your rod kind of like, doom. and we'll, we got a rod here. We can kind of hopefully show you guys a little bit of the wrist action, but you're taking the rod and you're just kind of going like, you're not trying to like bring this thing to the sky. Like you see me do a lot in the summer. It's more than just this pop, pop pop, let it hit bottom and just kind of keep popping it. But always, every single time, let it hit bottom. Very important because most of your bites when the water is really cold will come on the bottom of the lake. So, and you guys will definitely see more of this kind of as the spring, spring goes on. We'll fish in a bunch of different situations and catch a bunch of walleyes on it. And um, yeah, that kind of makes it most of our, most of kind of the hard baits that I kind of wanted to show. As far as locations where we are fishing, 
because that's always a big thing. Now, river fishing, obviously, in a lot of the, like, whether you're in a Mississippi or the Wisconsin River, most of us in the spring, we obviously are thinking, like, dams or, you know, you know maybe a different river. You're thinking below a set of rapids where the walleyes just don't go any farther. And a lot of that is true. But a lot of times, there's little sweet spots that you can kind of look at to kind of be more effective throughout the, you know, throughout the day. And whenever you're talking water temps that are just really, really cold, generally more times than not, you're talking about catching most of your fish of the day in bite windows, maybe morning, maybe evening, most of the time evening. Or you're talking about just little unknown bite windows, right? Like all of a sudden it gets sunny on a cloudy day and you catch fish for an hour or something like that. The colder the water is, generally the more reliant you are upon like these little bite windows and things like that. But generally where we were fishing, and bite windows kind of go hand in hand with what spot you're fishing. If you're not on fish in a bite window, generally, obviously your day can suck. But if you really focus on where you're getting bites, and there's kind of a couple ways you can do it. Generally, when, whenever I'm on a river system, I almost always auto chart. And that's a hummingbird feature that lets you map the river. And a lot of times when I'm fishing blade baits, like I talked about, I like to kind of drift down the river and I'll kind of use the trolling motor. And Bo was doing most of this in our last video where he's kind of kicking us in and out. And generally what you see in a river system is kind of like a flat that'll come down both sides and then some kind of like channel edge. I like to generally position myself right around that edge. And, you know, it's easier said than done. And the, in the river systems, your map's always not 100%. So what I really like to do is run that auto chart. And a lot of times, like, we'll kind of throw up a little a screenshot right here of the Lake Master on the Hummingbird. These are the kind of spots right here where I end up getting bit more times than not. Whenever you have a flat coming off the shoreline that meets a channel and you have a little knob, right next to that channel. Those are kind of the spots to really focus on. And a lot of times what we'll do is we'll waypoint those. Waypoint all those little knobs going down the river. So when we start our pass, we know that we have to connect these eight dots as we kind of float down. And maybe you spot lock in each one for 10 minutes and kind of work quicker through the spots that aren't obviously little knobs or things like that. Surly, what are you digging into over there? Okay, you're good over there. So that's another tip that, you know, as far as location, a lot of times you can look at like, fishing a dam or fishing, you know, a, a, a major, you know, break in the river system where the walleyes naturally move up in the spring as just kind of, well, it's a crap shoot up there. When in reality, a lot of times there's these little tiny sweet spots where if you put yourself in those spots 15 times over the course of the day, you're going to catch more fish than the guy who's just randomly driving down the river. At least that's how I look at it a lot of times. And over the course of, you know, my experience here fishing, it definitely pays off over time. And a lot of times, you know, another good thing that's worth pointing out, when you're fishing these river systems and the water's really low and really clear, we haven't, we're not even to the point of the season yet where like runoff's a factor or like the water's starting to dirty up and fish are coming up river. We're just dealing with resident fish <clears throat> that kind of have been living in these areas since fall. And really low, really clear water, this generally means, and cold water, this generally means you're going to have a really good, like, evening bite right at that sundown hour these fish will get, kind of slide up a little bit more out of the middle of the channel and kind of raise up off bottom a little bit and they'll sit on these knobs and they'll actually eat for a little bit so middle of the day snapping something absolutely crucial to get a bite later in that prime time window it was like you could actually do things that you could tell like okay the fish are now feeding and they're biting they're still biting the blade bait good they're biting a jig and minnow they're biting a plastic and, uh, you know, kind of one of our favorite ones. We like to fish a lot. Do we even have one sitting here? We do. We got a couple of swim baits here. You know, just three quarter ounce or three eighths ounce jig <clears throat> and a swim bait dragging it back into the current. And you can see a lot of times, like when fish actually bite, um, you could almost kind of fish whatever you want. You know, whether that's a plastic on a jig head, that's a 3.8 inch Kalen's tickle tail, or whether it's a blade bait or a jig and a minnow, like so many of us are used to fishing in the spring. Those presentations get a lot more attention when the fish are actually biting. And you kind of, you can kind of imagine it. You got a bunch of fish sitting there, you're fishing through them with a the jig and a minnow and your bait's just going like this. And those fish literally can just watch it go by uninterested. And then they have a blade bait that, you know, hits bottom two feet in front of them and just goes, real quick hits bottom and it's like they almost have to kind of pounce on it when they're not biting so that is a big part to catching fish when the water is really cold on these river systems so yeah <clears throat> that's kind of the stuff i want to talk about the rod we fished the whole video and this is important super important for when you're fishing blade baits in really cold water or when you're fishing any hard bait 
in really cold water. This is the Elliott Rod 7.3 medium light fast. Now, the best thing about fishing this rod, see if we have enough real estate here to kind of show you guys a tip. When you pop this bait up and a fish traps it to bottom, if you're fishing with a super fast action rod that it does not have a lot of tip play, you're gonna pull hooks out of fish. You want a rod where when you pop that bait up, because you are doing an aggressive initial snap up that the whole rod can load. Otherwise, what you're gonna end up doing is you're gonna be end up pulling hooks out of fish. Now, like we talked about, a lot of these bites are gonna happen where these fish pin it to the bottom and you're gonna end up hooking them like in, you know, on the front of the mouth, but not inside of the mouth, if that makes sense. So you pop that bait up in the hooks here, that little treble hook, it's just gonna pull out a lot of times if you rip too hard. And one thing I always say, when, you know, for guys new in my boat who are fishing blade baits or fishing with me the first time like this, don't feel that bite and just crank on the fish. What you wanna do is just lift into those fish. You're gonna hook them either way, but if you go to crank into those fish and do a super aggressive hook set when you feel a walleye trap at the bottom, on a, a bait like a blade bait with smaller treble hooks, you're gonna pull those hooks out every single time. So fishing a rod like that, like a medium light, or even like a, a Elliott Rod 7 light, a fast action rod with you know kind of a lighter load to the tip is super important. You're gonna end up landing a lot more fish. So hopefully this video is kind of informational for you guys. I always kind of like going over this stuff whenever we go and go to a different location that we don't fish all the time and you guys don't see fished all the time um you know in a lot of my videos so i appreciate you guys watching this hopefully you guys enjoyed the first open water video of the year there'll be a million more coming we got a ton of exciting announcements coming out in the next month or so and i'm super excited about it starting tomorrow i think so i appreciate you guys watching these videos please subscribe we're shooting for a hundred thousand i think we're gonna get there soon so i appreciate all the support thanks for watching we'll see you guys next time